Well, hello, girls and boys. Happy Friday. Um, looking forward to a two-day weekend. Hope everything is going good with the video distance learning classes. Again, anytime you have a little problem and you get stuck, feel free to email me or pause the video and go back and look at that again. So let me look at a couple things that I want to go over is first thing is I've changed the quiz there was supposed to be a quiz tomorrow but I decided no I'm going to give you a little extra time to study for that um, up through and including anything that we've done today Friday and let me get rid of this little picture okay and so I'm probably going to submit that on Tuesday on Monday we've got a heavy duty date of multiplying mixed numbers times mixed numbers so I don't want to interfere with that so we're going to have it on sort of a free day on Tuesday and make sure that you have done every single thing in the packet up through let me see if I can find it up through today's assignment which is, is going to be anything up through five so in fact I'll show you the elephant worksheet will be the last one. Every single thing should be complete up to this assignment before you even attempt to take the quiz. And I'll talk more about the quiz on Monday. Again, make sure that you're very prepared for that because you will not be able to use any notes, no cell phones, no anything except your awesome brain. All right, the next thing I want to say is that um, at this time, if you haven't already, make sure you have submitted assignment 3A and 3B. So 3A looks like this. Remember, this is going to be out of 50. I believe I already had you check your answers, but if not, no worries. I'll check it for you. So again, 3A is page 250, uh, 281, excuse me. And this is a really important one, moving words. Now this must be submitted with your work. The one that I just mentioned, the 281, your work should have been done on here. So I, I can clearly see it on there. So that's gonna be a submission of three pages. And then the other one that I needed to get from you is uh, from video four it is going to be 4A and also C56. So 4A is this one. Again, the work should have been done here. And I wanna go over something very quickly because some of you are just simply multiplying straight across. And I wanna to emphasize to you that when you have your quiz, I'm gonna say, do these problems with reducing first. That is a method that we are learning and that's a method that you need to make sure that you understand because you cannot get full credit unless you know that. So I'll go over an example right here. So on this one, the first thing I see is there's a six here and a six here. So I'm able to go ahead, I'm trying to make this bigger. It's not going any bigger. All right, here we go. So there's a six here and a six here. Remember, six divided by six is a one. Let me get a different pen here. So I can reduce that out. And you must be putting, you must be putting the, where you're crossing those out. I see some of you are not crossing those out and that's absolutely incorrect. You can't just put a one. We have reduced out the six and the six. So therefore, those must be shown that they are gone. The same thing with the seven and seven. I can't just put one and one. We've reduced those out. So you must show that you have reduced those out. So you will not get full credit unless you're following my examples and reducing those out like I'm showing you. So please pay attention at all times. I know some of you like to speed through things. Well, who won the race when they had the, t the tortoise and the hare? It wasn't the hair, remember, who was it? Just think about that. So again, here is a five and a 10. So again, know how to reduce five. There is a five and 10. So we can reduce five into five 
and that is a 2 here. So let's go back and see what we have. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And this is 1 times 1 is 1 times 2 is 2. And by the way, I just want to mention that on video 4, I made a mistake. And oh my goodness, you know in class I always give candy if you find my mistake. And I only had one person to email me and let me know. Well, that person got some virtual candy and a star. So it happens to be on this page that I made the mistake. So when we get in class together again, you'll get real candy if you know where that mistake was. All right, so again, watch those little details. Those are very important. Then also, again, so I went over the reducing method. Make sure you know that that's very important. On our assignment four, again, make sure that you submit 4A. You may submit an additional if you want me to look at those. Um, also, when you are emailing me, please put what you're emailing me about. Uh, for example, if you're submitting assignment 3A and 3B from video B, from video 3, you can say subject 3A and 3B work. That's good. Or you can say video 3 work. That works too. Or you can say if you're submitting from video 4, video 4 work. So that helps me find it when I'm looking for work um, in my 300 emails that I have from all you wonderful children that are submitting all your work. Or you may also submit two assignments. You can say video three and video four work. That works also. And if you can attach those, if you know how to scan those and submit them as one file, that is the best way to do it. So I can look at them all at one time rather than uh, downloading individuals. All right, so let's see what we are going to do today. Today's going to be kind of short. Aren't you lucky? So the first thing that we're going to start on is word problems. And one of the keys that you need to know in, in this is that generally, not all the time, but generally when you see the word of, it usually means multiply. In fact, we're going to do one that's very similar uh, to one that we did last time. We're going to start with um, what is the friendliest kind of airplane, 5A, and it's going to be number 10. So this is very similar. This looks like a good quiz question. So label your spiral uh, number 5 for video 5. And it says, let's go ahead and read this one. It says, Rachel has a collection of 40 stuffed animals. Those are, oh, I do too. Who is that? Ooh, what is that? Do you know what that is? I don't have a name for it. Oh, yes, I do have a name. It's right here. Antsy. This is Antsy the Anteater. Again, 22 years old. Older than you. So remember who you saw and who you haven't saw haven't seen in these videos. Goodbye, Nancy. Okay, here we go. So Rachel has a collection of 40 stuffed animals. Of those, again, I said of is a key word because it's going to probably mean multiply. Of those, three eighths are bears. Again, not all of them are bears, three eighths out of that. And then one fifth of them, if you can insert the word of, then again, that's going to be multiplied. The rest are other animals. How many other animals does she have? So this is one you must do in your spiral. So let's go ahead and start this. And let's start with the second sentence. Of the animals, three-fourths of them are bears. And I'm going to sort of rewrite this in my mind. I can also say three-eighths of the total of the total are bears. So I'm going to rewrite that over here. So that is your number 10. Three eighths of the animals are 
bears. That looks, if you go up, wow, that looks very similar to this one. One fourth of all the students had violas. So it's kind of the same kind of problem. One fifth of the students had cellos. Very, very similar. So by now you should be able to do this. You might have to rewind, rewind about three different times. So three, full, three eighths of the animals are bears. And then it says one fifth, and we have to assume of the animals are dogs. So let's write one fifth of the animals are dogs. And then it says the rest are other animals. So again, just like I put a picture up here, 10 were violas, eight were cellos, and the rest were violins. I'm gonna do the same thing on this next one. So we're gonna have so many dogs. We're gonna have so many, oops, I should have reversed those bears. And the rest are going to be other animals. All right, so here we go. So now we have to three-fourths of the total animals. Well, how many animals were there? There were 40. So we're gonna substitute that into here. And because that's a mess, I'm gonna rewrite it in a second. So one-fifth of the animals, again, of the 40, were dogs. So I'm gonna rewrite that again. That of means times equals to the number of bears. And one-fifth times the 40 is, is the number of dogs. One-fifth times the 40 is the, num oops, is the number of dogs. So here we go. Here's where I don't want you to just go three times 40 is 120 divided by eight. You must learn for the quiz the reducing techniques. So. I don't see an eight on top, but I do see that eight goes into the 40. So we're gonna divide both of those by eight. Eight divided by eight is one. Again, you must show this crossing out. You will not get full credit if you don't do that. Again, this now, we've reduced it out. Eight divided by eight is one. 40 divided by eight, by eight is five. And there's nothing left to reduce. So now we can go straight across three times Five is 15, one times one is one. 15 divided by 15 is 15. And so that means that there were 15 bears. Then the number of dogs. Now this one is actually very easy to go straight across, but I want you to get used to that reducing method. So five does go into 40, five goes into five once. Five goes into 40 eight times and straight across now. One times eight is eight. One times one is one. Eight divided by eight. Eight divided by one, excuse me, is eight. And then, so that's the number of dogs. Now, again, I'm not gonna finish this. I'm gonna let you finish it. I do know that all together, there were 40 animals or 40 stuffed animals. And out of those eight are dogs, 15 are bears. Can you find the number of other animals? So again, I'm going to let you finish that one. And then we're going to walk through some of these other word problems because most of them, you're going to have to do them independently. Um, I, we'll see if there's any that you could, a lot of them you can do here. So now this is, he made five gallons of fruit juice. If one fourth of the punch that he made was cranberry juice, how much cranberry juice did he use? Again, he's got five gallons. One fourth of that amount is cranberry juice, 
How much is cranberry juice? Again, what does the of imply? And if you said multiply, that is correct. So one fourth of the punch. And how much punch did he have? So you probably have to substitute, oh, you can't see that. One fourth of, again, means multiply. Out of the punch, how much punch did he have? Five gallons. So guess what you're gonna have to do? If you said multiply, you are correct. Let's look at your number two. And, and please, un, until I tell you otherwise, you may do them right here. Uh, the number 10 was, was maybe one of the only ones that you had to do on your spiral. So number two is using this printer, how long would it take to print 30 pages? It says, so it says a high speed computer printer prints a page in one six second. Using this printer, how long would it take to print 30 pages? Well, just imagine, let's suppose this wasn't a fraction. Let's suppose it was just six. Every page took 60 seconds. And I've got one page is six seconds. Did I just say 60? I meant to say six. If every page took six seconds, so one page would be six, six, six seconds. Two pages would be two times six is 12. Three pages is three times six, which would be 18 and so on. I would be doing what? How would I get the total for 30 pages? And if you're thinking ahead and you said multiply, you're right. So now you, you don't do anything different. Now every page is one sixth second and I've got 30 pages. Guess what you're gonna to need to do? Same thing, I want you to think about it. Um, we might do this one. So this says, how much is needed to make a half of the recipe? Well, I just inserted the, ha the of because it makes sense. So it says, one recipe for pancakes calls for one cup of pancake mix and three-fourths cup of milk. Always look at your question because I may not need everything. How much milk is needed to make half of that recipe that they just referred to? Well, I, they're not asking me how much of the pancake mix. They're asking me how much of the milk. Well, I need to make half of that recipe. I need to make half of that recipe. And in that original recipe, how much milk was there? There was three-fourths. And again, what does that of mean? And again, if you said multiply, you are correct. And I want you to finish it out. So this one is high, 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 high. Why can I not read today? Oh my goodness, how high was the mural? So we're looking for the height of the mural. The students at this school painted a mural 25 feet long. The height was three-fifths of the length. Well, there, there's our little keyword. The height was three tenths of the length. So if you know what the length is, you're just gonna substitute it right here, put it over one, and you're gonna finish solving it. Again, most of these I think you can do on your own. Let's look at this one. What fraction of an acre is planted in orange trees? The avocados earn, own one fourth acre of an orchard. So let's see what they own. They own this amount. Of that amount, two-fifths of that orchard 
is planted in orange trees. So one, two, three, four, five. Two fifths, one, two, out of the one, two, three, four, five, is planted in orange trees. What fraction of an ang a why can I say that word? Acre is planted in orange trees. So again, two fifths of the orchard. And again, what does of mean? And you are right. So I, I think you know what to do with that. And it should, when you're done, have something to do with what I've diagrammed right here. Let's see if there's any more. Probably there's one or two more that I'm going to go over. I'm not going to go over all of them. The number eight, it says, how much pure gold is in four ounces of 14 karat gold? So 14 karat gold is nine twelfths pure gold. You really don't need this 14 karat. They're just saying that if, if they call it 14 karat, it is not completely all gold. Seven out of every 12 parts of it is pure. Five out of 12 is other metals. How much pure gold then is in four ounces of that 14 karat gold? Again, you really don't need this. That's just a label for the type of gold. So I'm looking for how much pure, how much pure, it's seven out of every 12 parts of every ounce. And then how many ounces do you have? So seven twelfths for one ounce, seven twelfths for another ounce, seven twelfths for another ounce, seven out of 12 for another ounce. You've got four ounces. Guess what you're gonna have to do? Email me if you have a question on that. There's one of these numbers that you don't need. And then let's see if there's anything else. Um, what fraction of the whole pie did she eat? All right, so a pie was cut into six equal pieces. Being on a diet, Matilda ate only half of a piece. And I'm going to rephrase that. She ate half, she ate half of one piece. Well, if you have a pie that's cut into, and I'm going to maybe draw it this way instead. Okay, if you have a pie that's cut into six pieces, what fraction is one piece? I want you to think about that. One fraction or a fraction of one slice here is not six out of six. Think about what one piece is and you're gonna have to insert that fraction here and then take one half of whatever that fraction is. Again, I want you to think about that. So here is your assignment. You are going to solve, ooh, let me go ahead and scroll out on this if I can. Well, I can't, I don't know what's going on. But you are going to do this Friendliest kind of airplane, number five. Please, on this one, again, find your answers and cross them out. You do not need to do the puzzle, but you must find your mixed up answer. You're then going to go to, uh, the what is the frog's favorite shoe? And you're going to do those by now. Again, I need to see that you are cross-reducing. Please do not just go across and go six over 24. The reason that we're learning how to cross reduce is when we get to larger fractions, you must know how to do that. So again, I'll do one right here. I see that two goes into the four, two goes into two once, two goes into four twice. And again, you must cross those out. Three goes into six, three goes into three once, three goes into six 
twice. So I'm going to go straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. I hope it's getting easy peasy by now. And again, you don't have to do the puzzle. You can just cross out your answer. If you want to do the puzzle, where I see the number 8 at the bottom, I would put the letter L. And you're also going to do 5C, which is the elephant. And again, using those same cross-reducing techniques. And then your last job is to study everything up, up through the elephant page so that you will be ready on Tuesday for your quiz. Again, you must have done every single thing in the packet for you to be successful on that quiz. It will count double than any daily assignment. And you have a great Friday and you have a great weekend.